Let's talk about Apple Peak Performance Event. This is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Apple just had their first spring event and wow, it is amazing. So they gave us an update on Apple TV, new colors for the iPhone, iPhone Pro. We have a new iPhone SE and also an update to the iPad Air, which are all really awesome if you use those devices or if you're looking to get a new iPhone. But my focus on this is going to be the Mac Studio, which I think is one of the best released so far. And this is definitely mind blown. So there's a lot to talk about the Mac Studio and let's jump right into it. So Mac Studio is a computer that is positioned between the M1 Mac Mini and the Mac Pro. Now they didn't release anything about the Mac Pro at this event, but they did tease us saying that it is not the time yet. I think that by the time the Mac Pro comes, it will probably be around WWDC of this year. And it's definitely going to be another mind blown machine. So the difference between these three lineup, the Mac Mini M1, the Mac Studio, and the Mac Pro has to do with the power that you need. Number one, Mac Mini M1, I've always seen that as more of the consumer machine, and this is more of kind of like the Mac Mini Pro, but they call it the Mac Studio, which is perfectly fine. The SoCe inside here are extremely powerful that I think we have everything we need for pro creative and also video workflow that if you just go with these machines, you're gonna be fine. You don't really need the Mac Pro. The only reason why you would want to get the Mac Pro then is the PCIe expansion card slot that if Apple put it in there, you can do that, or you can put extra hard drive or extra SSD in there. I think that's what we're kind of looking at the Mac Pro right now. That's obviously speculation, of course, but I think that these are the, going to be the differentiator between these machines. Now let's have a look at the Mac Studio, which I think is an impressive machine. We have all the IO ports we're gonna need. We're gonna talk about that in just a moment. But first, what I wanna do is talk about the SoCe that is inside the Mac Studio, and that is the M1 Max and M1 Ultra. So let me put it this way. You have watched my reviews and benchmark for the M1 Pro, M1 Max. The 400 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, we're barely touching it. We're barely using it on those machines with the creative apps that we have right now. The 800 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth in an M1 Ultra is definitely awesome, but again, it's going to be very difficult at this point in time to find an app that can utilize the CPU, the GPU, the neural engine, the memory, the everything else on the system to really saturate that bandwidth. So Apple has really built an amazing machine, an amazing SoCe that can scale very well into the future. Now, there are some memory differences between these two computers as well. M1 Max is up to 64 gigabytes of memory. M1 Ultra is up to 128. And the reason why they do that is because the memory itself is unified, it's built onto the SoCe, so this makes absolute perfect sense. We're going to talk about the configuration and the recommendation that I have for photographers in the latter part of this video, but let's talk about some of the other things first that I noticed about this machine. The spec that we got before the eight terabyte SSD can go up to 7.4 gigabytes per second read speed. That's really impressive. And here's my recommendation for anyone who is a creative right now, and you're trying to configure this machine. Don't configure the machine for the SSD speed. Configure the machine for the amount of SSD that you are going to use today and also into the future. It's not worth it to get an eight terabyte SSD because it costs that much more in the system. And if you're not really going to use that storage, you're not really going to see the benefit. The other thing too is if we really think about just for photography workflow and some light video like I do, we're really not going to see that memory speed being saturated on the system by any means at all or that SSD speed because for instance, I was just at a wedding and I've downloaded four cards to my computer at the same time. Majority of the time, all those four cards, even when they're running at max, it's peaking at maybe close to like one gigabyte per second. And that's the max you can really do. So don't worry too much about SSD speed. And also don't worry about the memory speed. Just choose the memory that you are going to need for the system. Now I'm going through the performance really quickly because I'm sure the M1 Ultra is gonna blow the other machine out of water. But what I'm curious though is how the M1 Max is going to perform inside the Mac Studio compared to, for instance, the 16 inch MacBook Pro. My guess is that it'll be very close to each other. So what I am going to do is I'll be testing that out. And yes, I do have a few machines that I've ordered into Studio to run the testing. I'll share that with you in a moment as well. Apple have also released the Apple Studio display, which is really cool. We're gonna talk about that in probably a separate video because this, I just wanna focus on the Mac Studio. 
It has a pretty cool thermal system and a lot of connections. So let's now talk about the connections. So on the front, you have the two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 connection and you have an SD card reader. On the back of this machine is really awesome because you have four Thunderbolt 4, you have one 10 gigabit ethernet connection, two USB type A, and my guess is that all these are USB-C compatible, so, or USB 3.0 speed compatible, so you're gonna get really good speed out of this. One HDMI port, so you can link a 4K display to that, and also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which you can then use to power really powerful headphones and everything. So this is one of the more uh, powerful jack that they put into this machine, which is really awesome. So with this computer, you can link up to four external display along with one extra 4K display. I think that's one more display than the M1 Max processor inside the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but this may be something that's for the M1 Ultra only. I think that the M1 Max still may be limited to just four external display total again. Um, I haven't looked through the spec entirely yet. Things just coming out. So I just want to kind of mention that. Now they've also released a new um, keyboard with Touch ID and also trackpad and also their Magic Mouse as well. If you want to get those, you can. I'm not sure if this is included or not. I don't think it is, but let's go to the configuration page and see what we can do with the Mac Studio. Now, there are two configuration Apple recommends. There is the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra. Let me put it this way. If you click on just the M1 Max, you can configure the M1 Ultra SoCe with 512 gigabytes of memory if you want to do that. If you click on the M1 Ultra right away, there are certain options that you're limited and you can't access. So for instance, I'm just going to start out with the M1 Max, I already have that open. For instance, if you see right now, you can go with the M1 Ultra and 512 gigabytes of SSD, which is really kind of neat. Although I think you probably want to choose more than that. So let's talk about the SOCI, this system on a ship. And what are some of the options we have? So we have two options for the Max. We have the 10 CPU, 24 GPU, and the 10 CPU, 32 GPU. Those are very similar configurations that we have already seen in the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, although there may be less thermal throttling and maybe the high power mode on this machine is going to perform much faster than the laptop counterpart or the laptop variety, We're, we shall see. I'm really curious to see how these M1 Max are going to perform. And then we also have the M1 Ultra with 20 core CPU, 48 GPU, and the top version with 20 core CPU, 64 GPU. So here's the thing. If you ask me, preliminary, let's talk about the configuration. If you're a photographer, if you do video workflow, let me put it this way. The base configuration that Apple has configured for us, for example, this base M1 Max 24 core GPU, it's definitely going to work extremely well for a photographer. 32 gigabytes of memory. This is definitely going to be enough. You can choose to go up to 64 if you, if you do a lot of tasks with like large images. I think that would make sense. But otherwise, I would just probably stick with like the base model because this is an extremely great value for like $2,000. The only thing I would do in this configuration, if I would just to configure it, I would just say go with at least a one terabyte SSD or a little bit more. And this is an awesome an amazing performance machine you're gonna get out of it. Now, the reason why for photography workflow, I'm only recommending 24 GPU is that even in the program that utilizes a lot of GPU, for example, Capture One, if you've been watching my benchmark, there's very difference between a 24 GPU and 32 GPU version, the way how it performs. And we don't know when Capture One is going to go in and really fully optimize their software for these M1 silicons. So, if you want the best price per performance right now, the base one is gonna be the best. Now, if you want to say, well, I just wanna go in and future-proof it a little bit. Yep, certainly you can. I would go with the next one up, leave it at 32 gigabytes of memory or bump it up to around 64 gigabytes of memory and I think you're gonna be set with the system and at least one terabyte SSD. That does bring up the price a little bit, but again, for the performance that you're getting, I don't think this breaks the bank at all. And if you really wanna go for a really crazy configuration, I would probably say go for the M1 Ultra. And the only reason why I would look for the M1 Ultra for myself is that it has 20 CPUs. It's double the 10 CPU that is in the M1 Pro and M1 Max Soci, for example, from these laptop generation. And that's really what I want the most because the program that I use to do majority of my image editing workflow is Lightroom Classic. And Lightroom Classic right now, though it is not fully optimized to utilize these so see fully yet, I still want to throw more power at the program so that things would run faster. Here's the thing though, doubling the number of CPU from 10 to 20, 
with Lightroom Classic, I don't think we're going to see a 50% performance improvement. I think we're going to see a performance improvements in the range of, I would probably say 25 to 40% improvement or so. I could be wrong and I do hope that I am proven wrong when I have the machine in the studio, but as of now, I think we're only going to see that improvement. But if you work through a lot of files, a lot of large raw files, this is what you want is to spend less time for the machine to render preview. And the M1 Ultra, I think, is definitely the answer to that. Now, the only reason why I'm looking at the 48 GPU and not the 64 is that none of the photo apps, if you've been watching my benchmark, you will know that none of the photo app really utilizes GPU more than 24 or 32 cores on the system. So I don't really see the point spending $1,000 more to get 16 more GPUs in my system. It's one of the very first time that I'm thinking I don't need the top machine anymore. I don't need to max out everything in order for me to get the good performance. Now, a few other things I also want to point out about this is you have that stair step memory, very similar to what you have with the M1 Pro and M1 Max. So for the Max, you have 32 and 64. For the Ultra, you have the option down here, as you can see, 64 and 128. Now, when I configure my machine for my own use, I'm probably going to get the Ultra 20 core CPU, 48 GPU. I'm probably going to leave that at 64 gigabytes of memory because I'm finding out that 64 is definitely good enough for what I do right now, even with my large files and everything. And I'm finding it difficult to even exceed that. My Mac Pro right now, the Intel one from 2019, have 96 gigabytes of memory in there. And sometimes I'm using in like the higher, you know, 60 to like 70 gigabytes. But this being unified memory is much faster than the old architecture. I think 64 gigabytes are going to be fine with what I do. Now, if you do a lot of virtualization, you do a lot of uh, 3D, all those kind of things that requires a GPU, require more memory, I would definitely configure it more. But what I'm really talking about here is for photography workflow, for really intensive pro photography workflow and also video editing, such as the one I'm doing for YouTube. With that, I would also go in and configure with at least one terabyte of memory as I already said that, or a terabyte SSD. I would recommend going for at least two, at least that's what I'm gonna do for me anyway, because one terabyte is extremely limiting and I don't have a lot of room to move around. Personally, I would love to go for the four terabyte, but this starts to really add the price of the machine, where it's becoming now a $5,000 machine. And I think that something like this is a little bit easier for me to swallow at this point in time. And chances are if Apple release a new machine, I'm probably gonna upgrade the machine anyway, because I'm in this, review benchmarking cycle now. So I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. All right. So let's talk about the machine that I got into the studio to do reviews. So I've ordered a M1 Max with a 10 CPU, 24 GPU. I also ordered a 32 GPU version and I ordered this M1 Ultra with a 20 core CPU. All of these are going to be arriving at different times. So as soon as I have one in, I'll do a video and we're going to be doing these video that I constantly release, very similar to the M1 Pro, M1 Max laptop cycle that I have done before. Now for the memory, I didn't really upgrade the M1 Max, I think even with the 10 core to 64 gigabyte memory, I think I just left that at 32, whereas on the M1 Ultra, I just did a 64 gigabytes of memory. As I mentioned already, I recommend Pro get 32. These are already 32, it's already good enough. There's really no more point to really talk about this beyond just going with the base or if not upgrade to 64 gigabytes of memory. Or if you go to M1 Ultra, you don't have the option there. So anyway, those are some of my preliminary thoughts on the Mac Studio in general. I think this is going to be an extremely impressive machine. I like the fact that Apple is now building powerful machines without these display built in so that the user have the option. For example, if you don't need to install any card, this is going to be the perfect machine that you can use in your workflow. And I am super excited to test this in the studio. One more thought that I have about the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra, especially for video workflow, is that if you want to encode and decode in the fastest way possible, I think that it may be worthwhile choosing the M1 Ultra just because we already seen that number get cut in half, for example, going from the M1 Pro to the M1 Max because of the double encoder decoder engine. I think that when we go from Max to Ultra, we're going to see the number cut, cut down again in half because the Ultra has doubled the encoder decoder engine compared to what is in the M1 Max OC. And I think that's gonna be another interesting test to put the machine through because if it's faster than the M1 Max and it cuts that time in half, then there's no saying. The Mac Pro has nothing against these machines anymore, the current Intel crop of Mac Pro. So anyway, that's my thought on that. 
Um, we'll find out more when the machine release and I'll do more benchmarking reviews and I'll share my thoughts on that with you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Give this video a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.